Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Jeff Kalibjian, who is a distinguished technologist at HP, and we're going to talk about the future of the wallet. Tell me about where is the wallet going? Are we going to, are we going to get rid of all of that stack of cards and cash that we carry around anytime soon? Well, I think it is going to happen. Both uh, Google and the ISIS consortium have come together to, uh, to construct uh, digital wallets that will be going into mobile phones which have NFC capability. And, um, and so this is going to happen. Uh, the question is, is it going to catch? Is, is the value proposition going to catch on in terms of convenience for customers and then uh, convenience for the merchants, issuers, and mobile operators? So um, it's going to happen. It's going to start. I think the real issue is, is it going to catch? So for consumers, probably the thing that, that a lot of people are paranoid about is how secure is it to be able to have all of your payment data on your phone? Right. So the good news there is that the, uh, the, the, the whole paradigm around the wallet is using a pretty good tried and true security practice. And I'll, I'll give you a few examples of that. Uh, first of all, the wallet application is actually not going to be put in the general processing area of the smartphone. It's going to be placed in what they call the secure element, which could be an SD card or, or on the SIM, but it's separate from the general processor space. And so from uh, a security perspective, it's always good to put uh, uh, applications doing sensitive operations in, in separate physical hardware. And so, so that's a good, it's a good notion. Um, additionally, the whole ecosystem around the payment infrastructure as far as interacting with acquirers or getting back to issu issuing banks are using some of the established standards that are out there. Uh, there's the EMV contactless uh, uh, communication and security standards and also existing security standards of TLS and SSL for communicating back to issuing banks. So um, I think the good news is that they're not sort of trying to roll their own. It looks like they're trying to use good security practice. And so the concept that your payment card information will be in this device uh, that is running sort of in a separate piece of hardware using cryptography for securing this information actually is a, even a much more secure paradigm than having a credit card where your account information is on a mag stripe that isn't encrypted. So uh, I, my, my response to that is, yeah, it's, it's going to be more secure. Well, yeah, because that's the, the, the magnetic stripe on the back of every credit card. Uh, if you have a reader, you can read right. the data that's there. Right, that's, that's correct. And, and you know, the, the, the prop there is, well, gee, the, the credit card number is actually on the card, so why do we have to encrypt it on the stripe, right? Okay. But, uh, again, what the wallet is allowing us to do is to use, uh, you know, uh, cryptography to encrypt that information, to actually put it in a little separate piece of hardware, and then using that existing infrastructure, uh, both uh, from EMV, the Europay, MasterCard, Visa uh, consortium that, that is really um, uh, more popular in Europe right now. Uh, but they're using that technology and they're using uh, good, uh, good old-fashioned uh, TLS and SSL uh, for some of the communication links and getting back, uh, getting the transactions back to the issuing bank. Aside from making the wallet thinner, what kinds of things should we anticipate that uh, NFC might make better both for the uh, buyer and for the person that's on the merchant side of the equation? Right. Well, uh, a couple things. Uh, I think from the merchants and issuers, uh, you know, one of the things they do look at is sort of the security, uh, the security side of things, and so um, uh, you know, they're they're think uh, they're correctly thinking that they'll be able to get a much better uh, foothold on on the whole issue of um, of uh, you know controlling those credit card numbers. Uh, from a consumer perspective, um, I think it's sort of the fat wallet issue and uh, that is like every you know every guy's wallet which is stuffed with credit cards and loyalty cards and all sorts of stuff um, that all collapses you know down to your to your digital wallet and so uh, uh, you know it makes it uh, more manageable in the abstract but I think the, I think the question is uh, you know, in terms of practically using that on a day-to-day -day basis, are you going to reach a cadence or rhythm that allows you to do it easily? And I think that's still somewhat of an open question. I know I have a, a case on my own phone that holds like two credit cards, and so one of them is uh, my, my uh, transit pass, and the other one is a, a card that I carry with me, and, and that is convenient. And, and I don't know that having an app necessarily is 
any more convenient than exactly. that. Exactly. No, that that really is it because uh, you know I think one of the uh, the value props of uh, you know the folks uh, in the game is oh yeah it's more convenience easy accessibility but then it's like well hold it when I open my wallet I can pick out my own credit card uh, and I can find that pretty easily and I can uh, you know pick out my own loyalty card so. Mm, I, again, I think that's a that's a user user feel, and uh, I think it's still somewhat open as to how it's all going to fall out. One of the questions I wonder about is, uh, you know, like Starbucks offers like loyalty rewards, and many other companies do as well. And part of the reason they encourage you to use their card is because they reduce their transaction fees by aggregating the amount of purchase that you make at any given time. Is something like NFC going to further reduce the amount of costs that a, a merchant might have? Yeah, potentially. Um, they, they can do a whole bunch of interesting things in actually encouraging the customer, you know, buy loyalty cards or special offers they're going to send to your, your cell phone to do different things. So yeah, I think there's some, uh, there's some cost savings there as well as uh, revenue opportunity that is ability for them to uh, you know attract you to more things so um, so yeah